it has been two years since the Taliban retook power in Afghanistan. Tens of thousands of people fled the country at the time, fearful that the takeover would mean a return to the harsh Islamist policies of the past. Taliban leaders have avoided making clear statements on many issues, but now two years on, the world has a much clearer idea of what Afghanistan under a new Taliban regime looks like. Scenes of jubilation on the streets of Kabul as members of the Taliban celebrate two years since they seized back power. Flags emblazoned with the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, the Taliban's formal name for the country, were held high across the capital as supporters gathered to honour their leaders. Death to those who are against the Taliban. Peace in Afghanistan. Bloodshed has ended. The flag waving continued at an event hosted by the Minister for Education. He spoke about the Taliban's education programme at Islamic schools called madrasas. One jihadi madrasa has been set up in each province of the country, and each one has the capacity to enrol thousands of Taliban. In each province, hundreds of madrasas have been built in villages. The Taliban began cracking down on secular education when they regained power in August 2021, transforming schools across the country into strictly religious seminaries. These reforms include restricting the rights of women and girls to attend secondary schools and universities. Women's rights to learn, work and to participate in public life continue to be eroded by the regime. I don't feel good and I'm not happy about this day. Right now, the Taliban are not ruling the country in the interests of the people. I don't understand why they are so negative about women. But some women are determined not to give up, moving to roles where they still have the right to work or studying in secret. I never turned back, nor did I ever give up. Although there are no educational opportunities after the Taliban banned women from schools and universities, our minds can't be restricted. We can fight against them. We should not miss opportunities and give in to obstacles. But the obstacles for women are only growing. And by rolling back access to education, the Taliban is forging a society in which women have severely limited opportunities outside of the home. Two years ago today, the Taliban seized power of Afghanistan. The radical Islamic group promised the revival of the country's economy. Those plans did not materialize. Afghanistan remains the world's largest humanitarian crisis in 2023. That's according to the United Nations. Life for Afghans is often a daily struggle for survival. Habib or Rahman Razuli lives with his five children in Kabul. Even with relatively stable income as a government employee, he feels the strain of the economic crisis. He earns the equivalent of 70 US dollars a month, still not enough to support his family. Some of my friends here and from abroad help me, but it's not enough. This help is temporary, so sometimes I look for daily wage work in construction. But there's no work there as well. The economic situation for everyone is getting worse. He's cleaning the family sewing machine for the last time preparing it before he tries to sell it. It isn't the first time he's sold household goods to make ends meet. Other families live on money sent by relatives living abroad. The money exchange market, Sarai Shazada in Kabul, is critical to their ability to receive money from outside the country. That's because Afghans are only allowed to withdraw limited amounts from their bank accounts. This is the Taliban government's way of preventing a bank run. The banks are under sanction, and the banks cannot make transfers freely to companies or to foreign countries. 
So Sara Ishasara is doing this task now. Our banks are weak. Our business-related banks, our national banks, are also weak. The country is feeling the burden of international economic sanctions, which were put into place after the radical Islamic Taliban took power two years ago. The supply situation has severely deteriorated, and the United Nations estimates that one in two people in the country is now dependent on aid. Habib Oraman Razuli makes his way to a second-hand goods dealer. With the money for the sewing machine, he can now buy food for at least the next few days.